No, don't turn off your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it is us, the glass cage. Conspiracy edition. <laughs> <laughs> we can't keep a straight face. Oh, no, we're we... talking ag conspiracies. And maybe we might dive into a few more, but we will do some serious talk on this. We just thought we might get out in front with uh, some... F- make a bit fun, you know, you know. Yeah, we like to have fun. Do oh, you? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's also a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we're thinking about all the ones we can be quite a um, conspiratorial group, us farmers. Oh, of sometimes. course we can. When we start we to look at the weather and we start to look at the markets and everything that happens. So I think what brought this on was you saw on Twitter the release of John Deere's pricing for the uh, the big 800 horsepower tractor. Yes, yeah. I have a theory. <laughs> well, let's say what the price was. Uh, 1.2 US? No, see, that's where the confusion... I talked to the salesman the other day. Oh, did you? It's actually 1.3 Australian. So much better. Yeah, so what we all thought, because it came on from an American on Twitter, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And they, they said 1.2 and then it Which we converted like to 2. Australian. 2.2 2 million. Huge... Yeah. Anyway, it's still one point three for attractors. Doesn't help. Doesn't help. But the conspiracy theory that I, I think, is well, my my theory here is that uh, they are pricing it so high that when they come out with the subscription model, the you know, subs- oh, yes, yeah, pay, yeah, yeah. pay two thousand dollars a month for your eight hundred horsepower tractor. That you go, okay, yeah, that's probably more attractive than spending $1.2 million on the tractor. Yes. Like it's a, you know, it's a tractor. It's not a, it's not a highly I complex. I should say that George does have a uh, tin four hat on at the moment. Yeah. Us, so. City, yeah. <laughs> i got to stop. You know how many John Deere satellites are over us right now? I do. At, at a minimum. I was using them a, today. At a minimum, 14. <laughs> yeah. They're listening. Oh, 14 linked, 16 to 18 to 21. Available. They're listening. <laughs> oh. uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I just think that they're trying to make things. Oh, they don't actually care. They don't care what sort of price they put on there because then we're all going to scoff and go, "That's no one's going to be able to afford that. Yes, well, I, it's not a conspiracy. It's a well-known thing with John Deere. Um, I'm looking at the Seedmaster. Yes. And I had a conversation with my salesman earlier this week. Yeah. Um, long or the short of it, Someone in the, uh, in Espence has got two of these seed masters, but he runs a Zurian tractor. Yeah, they uh, hooked on in the yard with the nine RX just to make sure everything folded, worked, everything like that. And they go, oh, look at all these features! This is fantastic. Yeah, and they hooked it onto the uh, the Zurian. Oh, nothing! All those features are gone. Oh, <laughs> I would be pissed. So, and they're all hydraulic features. So they're features like uh, tines are to lift at the end of the run by themselves. Uh, um, you tap of a button on the screen, increase your packing pressure or decrease your packing pressure. Um, they got rid of all of those features. All of those features are gone because you don't have a hard, the, the hydraulic pump. You know, it's not John Deere tractor. And this is when uh, my, the salesman and I had a bit of a um, little head-to-head because I said that the price of tractors are ridiculous yeah. because I was sitting in the red one at the moment. And yes. Yeah, he yeah. goes, well, you know, you're paying for it, for the technology, for, you know, the integration between that and the, the John Deere gear. And it's like, well, no. Like, you know, I'm not going to pay an extra, you know, I'm not going to say the amount to get that feature. Like, that's... <sighs> That's just that's borderline extortion, isn't it? Yeah, it, so it 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 is like so. I'd I'd have to go back and have a look. I used to know it a little bit better, but it was the early nineties, I think, between um, uh, Apple, so like Macintosh, oh, yeah, 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 and IBM and Microsoft. Yep, and uh, compatibility of uh, software. And uh, document formatting, it was yes. They yeah. would they would deliberately so one 
one company would make it so that they were compatible or they would they would add compatibility to the different file formats and then the other would go you know what we're going to update and change and block it yeah and so then you couldn't open the word document on there yeah uh, you know all the documents in between i'm fairly certain that it was legislated out they said stop with this shit it's anti-consumer it's anti comp uh, like anti competitive yeah this behavior is not good for the development of technology um that just like they can have all of the lawyers that they've they want to sit there and go oh no it's because we can't guarantee that this feature will work that well you know bet- between the cedar and the um and the screens they were plugged into john deere screens in zirians weren't they yes what if you were plugged into an old ninety four hundred? I uh, with a with a Gen four screen. I don't or know. A Gen it's five, a brand new Gen five screen that's been put into a ninety four hundred, which is published all over their their website. It's a John Deere tractor, though, so it's yeah, it, yeah. It, it knows oh, it. Yeah, it knows it. It knows it, it controls the. Yeah. yeah, no, I was. <sighs> we the salesman and I had a bit of a, a heated discussion over it. Yeah, yeah, to the yeah. Um, Wow, the, that, that's like John Deere's just sent their soldiers out to go and take one for the team. Yeah. I would not want to be trying to sell something that you go, yep, you've got all these features if you spend $1.2 million on this tractor. Okay, no, well, uh, no, well, the, yep, that's not 1.2, but for a, the equivalent of what I got was, yeah, there was a one in front of it. Yeah, so then, ah, uh, that. Do, I ne- do we need to keep the conspiracy music going? No, I think we could just leave. We, we can leave it off. Okay. Yeah. We'll just we just dial it down a little bit. We'll just dial it down. There we go. <laughs> I didn't put it on a loop, so I've got to keep pressing it. Oh. It gives good background music. Yeah, it just really gets me feeding. I've got to put another layer of alcohol on. <laughs> so uh, that's that, that's was, not actually a conspiracy theory. I think we've cracked it. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. We got to the bottom of it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> No longer a conspiracy. We're just getting fucked. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to put an E on this episode. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, so that the another feature was, um, and I was like, okay, I don't know why that's a feature, but you know, lifting is on bank one, fan one is on bank two, and fan three is on bank. I uh, say fan two is on bank three, um, and when you you turn all the screen on and you don't need to click your Actual SCVs forward, you just pressed on the screen. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't yeah. need that. I'll just push it forward. Yeah. And then, yeah, it was the tines and then, yeah, the the lifting and lowering and then the adjusting your packing pressure, which honestly at the moment in, with the Borgo, we do that anyway. Yeah. We've got a box that we do it. Yeah. Not a big issue. But, yeah, the whole you buy the uh, the tractor, you get these features. It's like, ah. Oh. Nah, blow it out your ass. Yeah. That's not the right. It's a tractor because it detects the ISO bus controller, you know, uh, whatever. I can't wait for the Ukrainians to stop scrapping with the Russians and those guys to get their heads back into the hacking the John Deere game. <laughs> Just <laughs> start shredding them back to pieces again, guys. <laughs> that was great. That was great. I love that. Uh, so, uh, we had a few sent into us. Yeah, more wives' tales than uh, conspiracies. Yeah, yeah, it's but, it's in yeah, the realm. It's, it's still it's in the realm. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, oh. <laughs> tales from the Instagram. Tales from the Instagram. Uh. Now th- this is a, a a big one, but uh, CSBP burnt down nutrient. Oh. <laughs> to, to gain market share. So I'm not sure if the East Coast would. We'll have gotten the news via telegram yet, but there was a small fire at the major port facility in Perth. In Perth, yeah. In Quinana. Um, very interesting that that theory is that Nutrient, <laughs> a competitive fertiliser <laughs> company, company, performed a massive, massive... No, CSBP burnt them down. Not down oh, yeah, 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 so CSBP performed a bit of uh, uh, corporate espionage, which... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now which I've got insider knowledge on this. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> so uh, one of Rhiannon's uh, friends, Katie, I'm not sure if she's listening or not, but she works for Horizon and they are buying that... Well, were buying that shed, Horizon was... And apparently it wasn't Nutrien at all. It was Nutrien's conveyor or something like that. So there you go. There's a conspiracy theory squashed right there. Have you always had those moving red dots on your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Give me the hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now this leads into the next one. 
and it uh, for companies own new logic. Ah, uh, so this is the um, the labs. Yeah, the, the labs the, to the then influence the results to then make sure that you buy the product. So the soil sampling and the uh, plant I mean, we sampling. Know, we know that they own <laughs> shares in New Logic. Well, they own the labs. Yeah, they own the lab. Like yeah. <laughs> you're doing it through them. Yeah. So I mean, if they're if they're influencing it, nah. Well, the, yeah. Well, I don't know what. Yeah, what are they, they could they could be like the pokies and just dial up like, oh, we want ten percent. So every result. Statewide is out by 10%. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting one. I like that. Um, now, obviously, we've, there, there's a few ones. Uh, now, this is more of a wives' tale, but the old uh, you start seeding on a Friday or start harvest, whatever you're doing, you start it on a Friday and you're yeah. going to have a breakdown, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Now, that happened to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's happened to everyone. We started on Easter, Easter Friday oh, and uh, one year for seeding. And the, the the seed tender broke. The, the nourish exploded. It's hydraulic filter everywhere. And uh. There was a mess. And it was a Friday night at about 8 o'clock when this happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, Shed gremlins go, yeah. Yeah, well, it was lucky. We went over to Will's, uh, our uncle, our neighbour, and uh, dived deep into his hydraulic filters because, you know, the, he, yeah. the, he's the original farm. Yep. And uh, had filters from back in the 90s and the 80s in there. Yes. We found an old New Holland air, like oil filter that yep. like fit perfectly and boom, we were off and running <laughs> again. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but it's odd for us to go through uh through Easter, but it one one year we did. Yeah. No, that's I mean we've we've I would say yeah, I believe in that firmly. Oh, I hundred percent believe. It's in a pretty that. good excuse to not crack into things on a Friday Arvo. Yeah. Uh I want the weekend off. Yeah. Like we'll just attack it on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Had but one last weekend, boys, before you know, yeah, <laughs> before we go to war. But then we've we've done that, and then on the Monday things are broken down <laughs> anyway. <so. laughs> May as well have done it on the Friday, <laughs> so then you could have got the parts at least on order. Yeah. So as I say, goes because it's always ex east. Oh, and they don't break down in the shed. So <laughs> no, no, but no, yeah. no, no. Um, now, uh, what else have we got? Livestock prices. Oh, now, that, that that's definitely a conspiracy theory with Woolies and Coles. Oh, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Livestock prices. The thieving pricks. Yeah, it's that. Uh, there's got to be something there. Four Corners did the big uh, price gouging um, expose not that long ago. Yes. And uh, that was, you know, when uh, I think it was about the time that the, uh, you know, you're seeing actually publicised for, for once was, yeah, a uh, farmer has taken sheep to the sale yards and has had to hand over $5 a head. They've been sold for a dollar, but because of the transport cost yeah, and, and yep, the yep. auction cost and everything, yep. it's actually cost him money to sell them. Yeah. And then you wander into Woolies and you go and have a look at the cheapest. The yeah, it's cheapest. Like 30 bucks a kilo. And you're like, that's how? how? And that's a Woolies who in, butcher. Who in between? Who in well, between is making this? Like a Woolies butcher. Like Woolies butchers are always cheap, you know. Yeah. Or a Coles butcher. We, we don't have Coles here, so. Yeah. But, you know, you go to the, the local butcher and it's you can understand an upmarket on there. Yeah. You know, it's, because it's local. And yeah, they're it's, selecting the animals. They're doing all the work themselves there. Yeah. Um, they, they've got a whole... They've got a dedicated shop as a butcher shop to that, not just part of a big chain. That's part yeah. of a big shopping centre. That's got lost leaders and a whole a whole bunch of stuff going behind it. Yeah, no. paying their CEO is it six or eight million dollars a year? The the, oh, the, be nice. the woolly CEO was on six or eight million dollars a year. I can't remember because I was just in a blind rage. <laughs> <laughs> it was at this I mean, point, that I was fuming. It's but, it's yeah. Nah, there's definitely. Sunning is up there and it doesn't help with the whole uh, live export debate. And then, hang on, hang on, hang on, let me bring this back. With the ship turning around Uh, and then the whole, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no, the, uh, the, the excuse of no, stopping live exports won't affect the local prices. Have you done Economics 101? Yeah. Like, come on. It's... This is a whole episode in itself. Oh, it is. But <laughs> <laughs> the, the conspiracy is that there's someone in between, and they're just they're sitting off the coast in their little yacht, uh, which is not a little yacht. It's a super yacht. Going, hip, 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 hip. we can't call them a boat. You've got to call them a yacht. Yes, you do have to call them a yacht. 
Yeah. Even the implication. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. And always sunny reference there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, the old flat earth. Now, this is uh, in terms of GPS. I do like this one. But there was also uh, – so Joe Hare, um, one of our mates, sent in – just he's got uh, – he sent me a list of what, what do you reckon about 60 to 70 conspiracy theories. It had nothing to do with farming. Some of them did. One did. Two. Two. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. One. one. Yeah. But <laughs> this was the flat earth. But it's vertical, <laughs> not horizontal. I do love that. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. But yeah, the the flat Earth with uh, GPS because I think is it John John Deere must be the one the ones that do it, the Earth is round. Yes, because they're more complicated. <laughs> yeah, they are, yeah. So and it's the other guys that make it flat because it's a lot easier to calculate. Yeah, it's it's something uh, that John Deere uh, they the the run lines actually curve towards the north and south pole. They wrap around. Yes, whereas yeah, the yeah. others have just gone. Nah, no, nah, yeah, it's flat. Here. Yeah, boom, yep. boom. So I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, that's that's the difference between if you're if you're a Trimble user, then the Earth's flat. If you're a John Deere user, it's a sphere. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know which one broke down that uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah, the flat Earth. Yeah, that was Trimble it. couldn't steer because <laughs> temporarily went spherical. <laughs> <laughs> but that was actually for quite a few days I thought you guys were out. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's a good thing that we controlled traffic so we could just hand steer it. What's hand steering? Yeah, uh, it's where you use that round thing in front of you. Oh. Like, like the old times. The ancient ones told us about. <laughs> <laughs> the ancient ones. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Um, uh, what else have we got? We've got uh, obviously weather manipulation. Oh. Now, where are we starting on this one? Yeah. Are we starting at the... Uh, let's let's add that in with cloud seeding. Okay, so cloud seeding is a thing. Yes. Genuinely you, is a thing. You pump a lot of, uh, I'm assuming, is it hydrogen gas into no, the air? It's, no, uh, it's like sulfur particulates. You drop it in the clouds. Oh, so okay. you go find I'm, a storm I'm thinking cloud of the one where they're on the ground and you, you see in the NASA one and they produce the cloud on... Oh, that was, yeah, the, yeah. the rocket testing. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that one is, you know... That's a stationary one down in the Everglades, I think. I'd have one. Oh, yeah. I've Even... got a spare couple bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a, an, an entire nation's uh, <laughs> space agency's funding <laughs> to try and get a couple clouds out of yeah, I've said this before. Cascade. Red Bull have sent a man to space. Oh, yeah. But Australia has. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull's got a better space program than Australia. Yeah, we are lagging behind. <laughs> To an energy company. <laughs> well, I mean, it the, sells drinks. Yeah. Do you know the only thing they sell? Drinks. That's it. <laughs> How have they got an F1 team? That costs hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. Okay, cloud seeding. Sorry, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> I was going to say that is a shout out to the Australian Research and Space <laughs> Exploration <laughs> Ass. <laughs> Keep the good work up, guys. We'll get oh. the guy on the balloon to space one day. <laughs> we'll work out the two hundred year old technology. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, cloud seeding is a ge- is a genuinely is a thing that's used uh, where you it's not sulfur, it's salt. Like you just drop salt into uh, heavy clouds. So clouds that have all got all, all clouds are heavy, but yep, yeah, yeah. So clouds that look like they could have high potential for rain, and you just guarantee it by dropping the salts in there. The salts then accumulate with the water molecules; they just build on top of each other. So we can't just send Tom out in his little ultralight and with a salt shaker. <laughs> Not just a salt shaker. No, you've got to have. There's a there's a there's a couple of yeah. There's it's it's a it's a real thing. Um, it being used to manipulate markets. And entire agricultural sectors, I, I have my doubts. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about maybe that uh, the Bureau of Meteorology is in in cahoots with the fertilizer companies? Oh yeah, I could get on board with that conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> because we've all seen the weather forecast that happened. So this time last week, we were predicted for anywhere between twenty to like a hundred mils of rain. Oh yeah. And then it all went. Or on the on the app, it went. It disappeared. Oh, it didn't dis- didn't disappear. I know where it went. Yeah, east. Yeah, Rowena Station. <laughs> They've copped it. Our stations copped it. It just went east U- of Eucla us. Eucla and- copped it. They closed the the air highway. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know they, like I said on uh, on my YouTube channel that 
uh, us as farmers, if this was the growing season, we would have been doing 24-hour shifts, spreading your rear, trying to get it out in time. Yes. And then so let's just go off what we've actually had. We've had four and a half mils of misty rain. Yeah. That would have just volatilised the crap uh, out it, of all the urea on the ground. So then you're like, right, we're going to have to buy more urea or Flexian. Yeah, that's a good – I like that. I I reckon that then possibly there's been a bit of, uh, uh, I don't know, higher up disruptions between the bomb and the fertiliser companies because of the urease inhibitors that have come to market. <laughs> I reckon there might be a bit of backlash. <laughs> <laughs> well, then uh, that's what I said. I was like, this is why we, we are going to use sustain because yeah. you cannot guarantee that, you know, they, they tell us it's going to rain. They gave us a 100% chance that it was going to rain. Yeah. It did. Like, it's not. Well, we're not getting that rain. No, well, that's – yeah, that's uh, – that's a, that's a good one. I like that. I, what I like about this is the moment that we start spending more with the fertiliser companies, then they're going to give us more reliable rainfall patterns. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be nice. Would Hang be on. Good. Uh, no, this is true. We did spend an absolute butt ton with them in 22 and it was very good, very good uh, rain-wise. Yeah, spend more, earn more. But that also had something to do with a war in, uh, yeah. in Ukraine. Hmm. Rise in the prices, and and most of our urea comes from yeah that from way. Russia. Yeah, it's it's not the best urea <laughs> <laughs> ethically. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not diamond mined, is it? Uh, nah, <laughs> it's, I think it's, it's diamond adjacent. Blood like diamond. It's, it's like it's 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 di- You're blood diamond. You're telling me that these workers swallow urea to get it out. Of, of of the mine. Oh, I'm not, not saying that, that's that how urea exa- works. I'm not. But <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 going, <laughs> they're going home to their families. <sighs> they're, they're they're moving their body bodily functions, getting washing the urea out, and then uh, selling it on the black market. I, look, I'm not saying that that it, it is not exactly the same as the Leo Di- Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Blood diamond. I don't think that that's the exact way that's that this I, is happening. Rewind about two minutes, guys, and tell me what he just said because I'm pretty sure he, he just referred to it as blood diamond adjacent. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just, <laughs> yes, I did say that, but that's <laughs> adjacent. Like it's it's next door to it. Maybe it's got a slightly different flavour. <laughs> It's, well, of course it does. It's urea. It's nitrogen. It's not diamonds. <laughs> diamonds don't taste – well, probably taste a bit dirty. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, so there we go. Yeah, well, oh, we, we, we got two more. So what, one of them is obviously the, the classic chemtrails. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know what that's got to do with farming, but – Well, I mean, for, for people who have applied a lot of chemical through the air – all of it's landed on the paddock and we're just fine. We are perfectly normal, <laughs> well-adjusted human beings. <laughs> Who think that urea mining is the same as blood diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Chemtrails confirmed. <laughs> All right, confirm that one. Ding, ding. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> then the last one was that uh, uh, annual ryegrass. Oh, yes, yeah, the annual ryegrass toxicity is just a way for the hay companies to pay less for hay. <laughs> it's completely made up and that it doesn't actually exist. Uh, Look, I could, I could get on board with that. You could also get on board with that, I guess, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, same as ergot being bad for animals. So, yeah. well, well, let's get into the, uh, the, the, the story of ergot. So, ergot, the story that happened on our farm. Yeah. Ergot. As uh, oh no no we don't grow we don't we don't have ergot we're, <laughs> we're very good at farming. <laughs> this is back in the nineties. Oh, yeah, yeah. But also we get a crap ton of ergot when it rains. Yes. Um. So <laughs> back when you know our dads were running the show, and uh, ergot for people who don't know, it's a um, it's a mold that grows on. It's a fung- um, fungal fungal f- fungus that grows in the seed of ryegrass. Yeah. Now. It is an LSD. Uh, it's a precursor to lysergic acid. Yeah, so yes. it, it it makes the sheep go. Yeah, he- uh, heats them up. Yeah, it makes them go crazy. Essentially, there was a theory that that was what caused the uh, uh, witch trials. 
or the you know oh because the, the bread because yeah, the bread was, was yeah ergot infected yep and the people went crazy they had you know hallucinations no, she's a witch th- they thought they were a witch and then yeah. killed them uh, the Salem witch trolls but <laughs> I, but anyway so uh, this guy working for uh, our dads at the time yeah goes, Hang on, it's an LSD can you smoke it. <laughs> And they said, oh, give it a go. <laughs> so they knew he wasn't going to get high off it. And obviously it was a bad year for Ergot. He found enough to put to put in his rolly and smoke it. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's wow. got to be up there with eating a patty melon. Oh, it's, yeah. That's, like, that, well, I think that's well beyond that. Like a patty melon at least looks and smells a little bit like a rock melon. Yeah, no, uh, watermelon, not a rock melon. Oh, well, cantaloupe. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, that's yeah, t- completely missing the fact that uh, ergot, if if enough of it, would just eventually kill you because you would overheat. Yeah, well, um, um, it does cause quite a lot of damage to to livestock. Oh yeah, they which um, is, you know, yeah, they, why they you get penalised for it. And when they get a they get necrosis and they all that and they go and put their put their feet in the water, try and cool down. It's yeah. a sign that you've got. You've got ergot issues uh, in feed. But, uh, yeah, no, I do like that the, the hay companies are out there trying to get the cheapest. I just like any – because we're price takers <laughs> on every on every side. <laughs> Who we're selling it to is trying to get it cheaper. Oh, hang on. It is a conspiracy theory. We all – we yeah, us as farmers. Yeah. And it's a well-known thing. Yeah. We buy everything at retail. Yes. But we sell it wholesale. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone's clipping the ticket on both sides yeah. of us. We, we, we get nothing. Well, we get something. We're all still here. Are we? Uh, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> Existential <laughs> crisis again. <laughs> Normally this happens about three weeks from John now. Deere. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my mind. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> oh, oh, well, that's going to end the uh, the conspiracy theory. <laughs> Now we're back into uh, the normal, uh, the glass cage. The glass cage normal. <laughs> I'm George. <laughs> no, I'm George. Ah, oh, here we go again. <laughs> uh, no, it's a bit of fun. Yeah, that's always good. Uh, send in uh, on the on the uh, Instagram uh, any funny topics you want us to cover. It's quite funny when you yeah when you dive into stuff like that. Seeing what people come out of the woodworks with, it's always good. Yeah, yeah. Love so we, we thought for the last little part of this uh, potty, we might talk something serious and we'll talk uh, contractor versus uh, owning. Yeah, yep. So just, I mean, we were pretty serious with the conspiracy side, but yeah, we'll, okay. go, we'll, go, we'll go serious on the, uh, now we'll go actual serious. Yeah. Well, let's start with uh, the classic one of owning your truck Yep. or contracting. Yes. So I contract, you own. Uh, we do a, m- a mix. You, uh, yeah, yeah, we've got contractors, mix. but we've got our own truck. Yeah. For, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say that the flexibility of having your own truck. So oh, 100% is a, lot, is, yeah. is a lot nicer. Yeah. So if you've got an issue in the paddock and you, you know, like, oh, we don't have enough dry grain, you don't have someone waiting there going. Yeah, uh, their their livelihood depends on you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the maintenance costs, uh, obviously, you've got to take into account that it's going to be significant. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Dad, obviously, we, we used to run our own truck for years. Yep. Years and years. And then uh, our truck was getting old and unreliable, breaking down a lot. And then uh, the guy who was driving it moved on. Yep. So, it was more like uh, Dad was like, well, let's, let's just go out to contracting. Yep, and he that's when he, he got the whole team. Like we used to have, actually, they used to live in this house, your house here. Yeah, yeah. When they came down, they, that we had like six to ten trucks. Yep, on that that contracting stage, and yep. then then we now we got Brian from GMB, who we've been with now for ten or twelve years. Yep, um, and yeah, you're definitely right. The whole uh, flexibility of your own truck is a lot better. Yes, uh, the whole ah uh, just. Go home. It's yeah. It's still wet. Or park it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the whole at harvest time, I don't need to worry about a truck at all. Yeah, I don't need to worry about um, tires going flat or finding a driver. Finding the biggest, probably the biggest issue 
because yeah. well, you've got to have all your accreditations, you've got to have yes. your medicals, yep, your logbook, yep, and you've got to follow it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to follow it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and uh, with a newbie, like someone you just get off gum tree to come drive your truck who's, yeah. who's all legit, yep. uh, they'll go down and then, you know, you've been delivering, let's just say, for purpose for the purpose of this conversation, you're delivering H1 wheat. Oh, so absolute myth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it goes APW one, and the the truck driver just goes, oh, that's all right. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. probably the more the bigger one is malt. Yeah. You go malt to feed on yeah. it when when the spread is huge. Yes. And you know you're growing malt barley, and they just delivered it at feed, and they've gone accepted it off. They go dropped it off and come back, and then yeah, you're like, hang on, what what was wrong? What was wrong with it? And you're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's just what came up on That was the, that was what we were given. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, that's that fundamental understanding of how like CBH and the grain delivery systems work. Yeah, which is again, yeah, you can get drivers who are very good, but might not have that depth of knowledge. That or won't fight for the farmer. Like Brian fights. Yeah, he he go he he'll look at it and go, nah, that's very close on the the protein. Do it again. Or, yeah, you know, do a lap. We'll yeah, do, we'll keep going. We'll try. We'll try and get this. Yeah. 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 So. There's definitely uh, benefits to to having it away, and you know he's he's dealing with it all. I don't need to deal with yeah yeah the driver side of it, the the maintenance costs. Yes, the licensing. Yes, yeah. licensing alone is just a couple of grand a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, it's it's an expensive operation. Your audits. Yeah, it's um we because we're running uh, the livestock as well. And we've got our yes our yeah. livestock trailers. Um, yep, we've got contractors. Like this morning, we had a um. A cartage truck taking uh, a load of cattle out. Yep, um, that is fantastic. They rock up. They've got a bigger truck, bigger bigger trailers, bigger setup, um, and we don't have the manpower to have a full full time uh, livestock carting yes. sort of thing. But yeah, we yeah. need to have the trailers there for when we need to do transfers ourselves or little bits and pieces. Yep. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a matter of finding where the flexibility needs to be. I think. Um, trucks is a yeah it, like there's lots of lots of cases like ours where it's hybrid where you run a truck yourself and then you get a sub or you get a contractor in and yeah um, they do the cream they'll do the easy running like we make sure yeah, that they've yeah. got like they rock up they get the full priority load everything's all good and then we'll do the scrappy bits in between the transfers for yep. seed or yep. whatever else um, if it's busy busy but then uh, things like contract spreading. <laughs> Yes. Yep. So we, when we split, you and I split. Yep. The farm split. You guys got the spreader. Yep. And yeah, you know, it wasn't a very good spreader. That's a minute. It was a crap spreader. The old Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. But you you got the spreader and the split. <laughs> I'll say that five times fast. Got the spreader and the split. <laughs> <laughs> um. And so we were using a contractor to do gypsum. Yep. And. We didn't really do lime back then anyway, but uh, then when it came to our in-crop spreading of urea, we were using the plane. Yes. Now, uh, it had its fallbacks on both sides. Yeah. The the gypsum spreading, uh, the it, it meant that all the cost was on them, but when they were breaking down and they broke down a lot, Yeah. it was just dragging on. Yeah. And now it wasn't costing us any more because we were just paying per hectare spread. Yep. But they were on farm. There, there was one point that we were like, no, nah, we need to get our own spreader because it took them like a month to spread a thousand ton. Yeah. Because everything just broke down on them and they weren't doing the greatest of job. Um, the, of, of the, what's it called? The run lines. Yeah. You know, so your earth's flat, earth's round. They were using a different system. Yeah. Okay. So we weren't getting that. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously with the plane, they are typically very busy. Yes. So you can't do it around rain because yeah, they, yeah. they they're obviously uh, every other farmer is trying to do it as well around rain. Yeah. So you get your slot. They come. They do the whole farm in a day, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's out there. It could be volatilizing. It could be brilliant. And yeah. Yeah. So That's, yeah. yeah, we ended up buying our own spreader. Yes. And it's been it's been very good to have. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, again, hybrid system, um, we've got two spreaders, uh, two very different spreaders, 
One's an Amazon oh, yeah, three-point yeah. link yep. and the other one's a uh, new fab. Yep. Uh, so for, you know, bulk material like clay, gravel, uh, gypsum, lime, can do fertilizer with it, but you can only do over 100 kilos. Um, yeah. Just because of the chain floor and the style of spread. Yeah. Uh, it's like we've done it before when we we're going after those high rates, but yeah, um, the contract spreader coming in, um, when we get really under the pump and we can't get the planes or, you know, it's going to be a higher rate than that, um, yeah, we dial. We've got a bit of a run going with Mel. Yep. And he comes with top of the line uh, machinery with a truck and he'll do the fertiliser spreading job um, perfectly. And that's, you know, like yeah. he's there. Yep. We make sure that, again, like if our spread is going at the same time, his gets priority because he's there. He's there, and he's, yeah. You know, yep. he's got other people to get to and he's, yeah. So it works for us. The plane, we use a plane quite a bit as well. Uh, so like for spreading yes. and, and for spraying, for the contract spraying yeah, as yeah. well. Yep. Um, yeah, just to try and get over hectares as fast as possible. It's about like, it's like, right, we've got to be done and we've got a, a, like a, a very narrow time like window to get it done. Well, just like I was saying before in our conspiracy theory side of this pod, you know, you, you've seen that rain, so you're like, boom. Yep. Playing contractor, us, let's go. Let's get this done. Let's get it out. Yep. And then, yeah. Yeah. It's, sometimes it pays off, but sometimes it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah, I mean, the other reason for using the plane down here a lot, which, you know, we don't have a, um, a spreading plane ourselves. Ours are only human transporters. <laughs> <laughs> but um, is to keep the wheel tracks out, uh, you know, keep the wheel tracks out of the paddock with our spreader because our spreader is a three-point link Amazon. Yeah, yeah, with the, yep. yeah. Yeah, you're low the ground, yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting. It's it doing the sums on it when you when you do the sums on um, contract versus doing yourselves. Um, it can you can get right down into the nitty gritty of it. Well, I mean, we did it for years and it worked out. Yeah, and then it's just more like convenience. Yes, you know, you, you can go and spread it yourself. You can do it in your own time. Yeah, the lime or gypsum's lime's probably the worst because lime blows away. You yeah, know, it's here now. Let's go now. Not, yep. oh, I'll be there in three weeks. Yeah. You know? Even though I said I was going to be there, you know, three weeks ago, it was, you know, it's because I've got a breakdown and then that's put me back. And then yeah. actually what, what does happen is it's a harvest ban. So you've got your movement bands and you can't be spreading. Or it's you know, too windy to spread. Or it's too windy. Yeah. All very likely things to happen to us here in the summer. Yeah. Um, but uh, in terms of other contracting, like contract spraying, the only time we do that is when we can't get on the paddock. Yeah. Uh, and I know you guys do it for your roundup on yep. your your desiccation. Yeah. Because, yep. yeah, again, you don't want the wheel tracks in your, in your yep. canola because you grow big canola. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't grow much of it. That's why we've got to protect every little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Um, but, yeah, like we, we, we'll do it when the boom spray can't, can't get to it in yep. terms of – uh, this is a disease or this is a, a bug that needed to be killed yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah. Now's the time. Yeah. And you, um, I mean, normally you can't get a hold of the, the airplane anyway, but. Yeah, because yeah. they're shared problems. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's got it. Uh, so that's that's when we use the plane, but uh, we haven't used the plane for, I'd say, at least five years. Mm. Yeah. Contract harvesting is much more popular on the East Coast. Yeah, um, yeah. There's not a huge amount that happens through here. Through here, no. we we used to do contract harvest, not as in us. Yeah, but have, we used have to, them we used in. to get contractors come in. Yeah, uh, and then I think we sort of went away from that. This is more when Dad had the yeah had um, all the reins and all the all, all the control. Um, there was those two classes. Uh, well, yeah, that, cats. There were cat the two cats. Things. That was that was early on, and yep. they stopped coming. I think just because they. Yeah. yeah, the the you know we we'd had them for a few years and yeah they just decided just to sell. I think they sold a header and then they were just focused on their own farm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a few go, come down from the wheat belt every now and then. Yeah. Uh, but then again, they were coming in like case headers and stuff like that. So that's when I started. I was starting to get into that whole nut, Dad. We need to go control traffic. Yeah. And uh, you know we can't have these Doesn't guys coming in. And, and, yeah. So. Yeah, and it's a it's a thing that works. Like the contracting runs seem to work where you've got a um, I'd say like a scale of like a sliding like so harvest starts in the north, 
you get a harvest run, and then as the crops maturing, the harvesting as it's going down, east coast starting Queensland, yeah, and then work yourself. You know, they're starting in September, and you look at Victoria in September, and it's still full flower canola. So these yeah, guys yeah, can yeah. Yep. can do a harvest run on the way through, and yeah, it works if you've got smaller hectares, like uh, George Summers was saying about they you know get the contract harvesters in. Well, yeah, they don't have uh, that. That's a whole different system in itself. They don't yeah. have any of their own gear. No, that's a that's that's a UK thing. Yeah, 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 but it's it's still like if you, you know, you had five hundred hectares or so um, that was growing reasonable, decent uh, crops, and you go, well, it's five hundred hectares. Can I justify having you know a hundred to seven hundred thousand dollar machine to do just no, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. It's, a, it's an interesting thing to see. Yeah, contract harvest, more popular in the East Coast. Um, not so much around here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well. No. I reckon that's uh, pretty much summed it up. It, it, it works in your system. Uh, it, yeah. it worked for us for a lot of years and then it didn't. Yeah. But then again, the trucking has worked, you know, absolute wonders for us. Yep. Yeah. And I'd never go to buying a truck because... That'd just be too much of a hassle. Doesn't doesn't fit in oh, in yeah, your, your systems. Yeah, people, Ugh. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, let us know on the pod. Send us a message if you uh, enjoyed the conspiracy side of it, and you know if you want to hear us do some silly things, or maybe just talk a whole topic that isn't farming. Yeah, that's it. Something. Yeah. Something completely different. And now for something completely different. <laughs>